Hey dudes, and welcome to the Leftover Culture Review. Welcome to another very special episode where we make some magic together. But not magic, we're doing a picture in Art Alive. Um, for anyone who's been watching the show in the last, you know, year or so, you might have realized that I've been using Art Alive a lot to pull together a whole bunch of different images. So that's what we're doing here. Making some art in Art Alive. And I think out of like all the Sega games, actually all the video games I have, um, Art Alive's probably the one that sees the most action, uh, especially in the last year. I have been using it pretty consistently to pull together a whole bunch of artwork, which I'm absolutely stoked with, but um, it's probably not the best use of a Sega system, right? <clears throat> When I first did the Art Alive review, and this was a couple, yeah, easily a couple of years ago now, um, and this one didn't actually end up, I, the project itself got corrupted, so I never actually got to finish that review. I ended up just re-filming it, re-recording it. But in that very first um, Art Alive review, I made this comment about... Um, at the end of the episode, we'll do like a special art show or something, and I drew a guy sneezing. Uh, all very funny, lowbrow humor. But that idea stuck with me, right? About doing this whole art exhibition using nothing but a Sega Mega Drive and a copy of Art Alive. And that is what this project's kind of turned into. As seen on TV. Um, that is not the guy that I drew sneezing in that very, very early episode. I redid it for the latest Art Alive review, but I actually pulled together a whole bunch of artwork, this one over here, not this one, using Sega's Art Alive. Um, and you can go check them out right now on the Leftover Culture Review website. I was really pleased with how, how a lot of those turned out. So yeah, I took that idea to heart in a lot of ways and I thought, you know, it might be really fun using something like Sega's Art Alive to see what I can come up with. So I decided to go for a bit of a character today. I drew this speaker um, on my iPad a couple of months ago now, and it very similar to the TV, you know, coming to life, coming um, to murder people. But yeah, the speaker was just, I really liked the idea. So I thought, or maybe I'll do turn them into a TV. That could be fun too. Have like a couple of different TV pictures. Ah, uh, just if I had someone to talk to about these ideas before I started them. Um, TV or speaker? Maybe I will go with TV. The um, exhibition, as I just said, is called As Seen on TV. Uh, the reason for that is because the only way to see the originals of these pieces of art that we are doing now is to be here in the room to see them. Um, once you turn the system off, it wipes the cartridge, you lose your picture. Which seems like a bit of a fault for, a, for an art program. But, you know, these were the early days. Uh, they were not never meant to last. So the only way to like save a copy of your picture is the manual recommends having like a, a VCR plugged in and using like a tape to record. But obviously here in the year 2023, I have a laptop hooked up to a mega drive, which is also hooked up to the TV. So you can see what I'm doing. I can record what I'm doing. And at the end, we have a copy of the picture that is um, you know, as close as possible to being captured on the or original Sega hardware. Um, the whole idea of this exhibition was that everything in it um, is, you know, authentic and ge as genuine as possible. That's what I really like about using Art Alive. Obviously, there are lots of different um, better options for making artwork, but I've stuck here, I've stuck it out with Art Alive because I, I do really appreciate just how genuine it all is. Um, the things that I'm creating right now, um, you know, I'm using the exact same technology available to someone with a Sega Mega Drive and a copy of Art Alive in, I'm pretty sure it was like 1992, 
2002 this game was released. Not really a game, this application. 1991 uh, is the date on the packet. Package. <clears throat> so I'm going to go for like a killer TV. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because, yeah, like I said, this exhibition is called As Seen on TV. So it might be nice having more than just the one TV uh, to draw from. Do I paint that in black? See, the problem, obviously, there's a few problems with using a program like Art Alive. Um, one of the hardest things to work with... Um, is the fact that you don't have layers, you don't have save states, you can't just go... There's ways to, like, paint over if you make a mistake, but... Yeah, for the most part, you're kind of stuck with the lines you put down. And if I chose to, like, add a bit of extra shadow, make something black, but I want to reverse that later, it can become quite a uh, laborious event. So, when you put lines down, you kind of want to make sure that they are as near to what you want as possible. And I haven't quite mastered the undo tool. Like, I've used this program a lot. Um, the undo tool just removes anything that you did with the last tool. So, if you do, like, all your line work at the start and then you do a couple of lines wrong and you're like, I'll hit undo and I'll just remove part of it, it just deletes everything that you use that tool for. So, that can be, like, quite horrific, like, when you're working on something and all of your work just gets removed, like, near instantly. Um, <clears throat> not super ideal. You could, like, if you gave it the forethought, um, you know, go back into the tool selector, pick a different tool, uh, and then come back back into the drawing and then when you undo all it is is like from the last tool that you selected so like you know there, there would be ways to work with it better than than that but yeah it's just like remembering especially like when you're in the middle of painting or creating or making something um yeah you just get caught up in the process So I'm kind of digging how this is coming out. It's not very often that I <laughs> like something this early into the piece. Normally it takes a lot longer when you're like starting to put the colors in and you start to actually see it come together and you're like, hold on, I think I've actually got something here. But I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with this a lot earlier on, which is a bit of a, a weird feeling for me. Especially after making so many of these, it's, um. Yeah, it doesn't happen often that things just feel like they're coming together well. One thing that is really hard to master here in Art Alive, and I still struggle with it after all this time, uh, is the composition. And maybe that's because I'm sort of like setting out with one subject to do per picture, I'm, um, you know, I, I, I start kind of in the middle or where I think the middle is, but by the time I get to this point in the picture, I'm starting to realize that, you know, it should have been moved over a bit or done. Yeah. Or, um, the composition isn't exactly kind of what I expected for it. But maybe if I sort of have like this power cable. It gives it a little bit of um, weight towards the back of the picture. Cool, cool, cool. Fill that in black. And then...
So one reason I like TV so much, um, <clears throat> like, you know, to the point that I had one tattooed onto my arm, <laughs> is that they are so, like, um, as far as the technology goes, they have changed a hell of a lot, like a lot of things have, but then you've got things that don't seem to change at all, like microwaves and toasters. But TVs, they have come a hell of a long way since I was a kid. Um, but unlike a computer, which is usually hidden away in a study or a lot of other sort of like appliances that kind of like have their place in the home, the TV is kind of like this really prominent one. It's usually right there in the living room, in the center. It's the one thing that like people, when they walk into a house, you kind of expect to see, you know, like the couch, the TV, a space to relax. So yeah, TVs kind of have that prominence in the household, or at least when I was growing up, that's something I noticed. Um, and yeah, I, I'm still obviously incredibly nostalgic about what it was like to sit down, watch TV together. It's a chance to connect with people. It's a chance to bond. Um, and that whole, that whole dynamic changes a lot. Like once you start having, you know, your own personal phones, devices, you start having streaming services like Netflix and Stan and anyone can watch whatever they want, whenever they want. Um, it definitely like harkens back to a more simple time. Uh, so I guess in a way that's showing my age, but yeah, I'm very nostalgic about the, um, the classic TV set. And that's why I've got so many like right here in the games room with me, because I do think they are really cool and I wish I had more, but they're also getting much harder to find lately, which, which doesn't make me very happy. Some of these fine lines are very hard to do when you're looking at a computer recording what you were doing. Sorry, I just wanted to double check that I was actually recording. Um, definitely happened before, like where things don't work, things break, things stop working halfway through and you don't realize until it's too late. So once I finish these pictures here in Art Alive, I don't do any further adjustments in Photoshop except potentially like resizing. Um, I try, obviously like at the start I said, you know, it's all about trying to make these pictures as authentic as possible. So it would be kind of like a waste of everyone's time if I took these into Photoshop to clean them up and fix them up and change things. But one thing I might consider doing with this picture is cropping, cropping it to size a bit because yeah, the proportions are like the whole dimensions of it still feel a bit odd to me. Unless for the um, ghost toaster picture, I actually had like sparks of electricity flying out. I wonder if there's like something I can add to this guy. I also did like a, a picture of a TV a long, long, a long, long time ago. I think it's in the book. <clears throat> so I didn't do it as part of the series, but I did this TV here that has like flames coming off the back of it. Actually, that's a really cool looking TV too. I've done some cool looking TVs. Look at me go. I might steal the idea of the cracked screen actually. Do I do fire again? Or maybe I'll do smoke this time. The old TVs can get a bit hot. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do smoke. Uh, we'll add, some of these lines can be a little bit tricky as well because you're constantly, constantly moving that little cursor around and it's just a little pain in the butt sometimes. Um, tapa, tapa, tapa. And for the prise de resistance, I don't actually know if that's 
very well pronounced French, but it definitely sounds legit to me at least. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments how wrong I am. Um, I don't know if I like that as much anymore. I was going to do like a fly buzzing around. Uh, maybe if I can turn this loop in. Just because the um, exhibition so far as seen on TV has had a couple of different like fly um, flies in it, fly references. Okay, there's a bit of a big fly. <laughs> Getting down to the really fine detail now. Uh, color that in black. Oh no! This is where the undo tool does come in handy. Ah oh, no! So I've obviously got a break somewhere in my fly. Oh, I think I see it. <clears throat> I think I see it. Woo. And now that I've drawn that dotted line, I don't particularly like the way it intersects with the movement marks I tried to put down. Maybe I don't need these movement lines at all. There's like enough happening in terms of movement now with the, the smoke, the fly and the cord. I don't like the cord. I'm calling it. So, deleting things in Art Alive isn't as um, efficient or easy as you might think. What I have found easier to do, especially if you want some tips to take back home to do some of your own Art Alive pictures, um, I just array, I, I mean, I draw over the lines that I want to remove using the background colour, which at the moment is white. Um, so, I'm going to do that now and just like isolate the lines I want to delete and then paint bucket over the top. Paint bucket over the top there, paint bucket over the top there. Cool, cool, cool. Um, what I'm going to do next, oh, do I start adding colour? I think we're there. I think we're adding colour. Um, that's kind of exciting. I'm going to find a palette that has like a nice... I do like the pastels. Some pinks. Yeah, let's go here. We can always change it later if we want. Because you only get 16 colours to work with at once in Art Alive, which is all I need. Ah, uh, uh, it's not... All right, we're off to a false start, guys. The lines that I thought were like dead set are not dead set. What you can do is also just like literally give your picture a border. And one thing I might consider doing in post-production for this piece is maybe framing it better. I don't think there's any rules. I mean, I'm making up the rules as I go anyway, but cropping the right hand side a bit just to bring the TV back into the middle a bit. I, I'd be okay with that.
There, now that we've given our picture a border, it should be much easier to keep the colours in the lines. Alright, we've got a bit of smoke happening. So I don't know if I ever explained why. Like, why use a Sega Mega Drive to try and make art on? Like, what's the point? Um, apart from just being like really interested in the Sega Mega Drive, what it was capable, what it could do, and the Mega Drive games library, um, I never got to use Paint Alive as a kid, but it seems very much like the kind of, not quite a game, but it's got like, it's a productivity app in a lot of ways. Um, I did enjoy using and having access to like different paint programs and I used paint a lot, especially once. Um, I remember using it a lot in high school. I'm thinking I might have to switch to this color palette just because it's got some more browns for the TV set. Anyway, um, yeah, so doing a whole set of artwork in Art Alive I guess in one way, it's just kind of cool to have artwork made using a Sega Mega Drive. I love how um, like genuine these pieces feel because it doesn't matter like what sort of technology you have. Everyone who's got a Sega Mega Drive and access to Art Alive um, have the same exact set of tools to draw and work in. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up. And I am very excited to finally present after, how long have we been recording for? 48 minutes. Um, it is the Killer TV in a pile of bones. Uh, I haven't come up with a name yet. That's the problem. So we've got the Killer TV, a pile of bones from his last victim, and then the light um, as the doorway opens up, revealing the murder scene. And the green stuff is just a whole lot of bad juju. Uh, whatever caused the TV to come alive. So what we've done is we've created a bit of a character, given it a bit of a scene to have some fun in. And yeah, I really like how this one turned out. I think like the composition was a bit of a challenge, but it also forced me to like try and think of a bit of a scene to put this character into. Um, I do really, actually, there's one thing I did want to fix up. I tried to do like some sticky tape on the head, um, of where it's been like cracked and broken, but it just doesn't look like sticky tape. And I don't think I'm going to have enough like definition to draw the ridges of the sticky tape into it. So what I might do instead, oh, actually. You know what we haven't done? We haven't added the dials yet. Man, what a dud of a grand reveal. At least it shows you like, <laughs> um, maybe how in the moment all this stuff happens. Like I'm not going back and touching stuff up in the next day. Um, when you do check out, if, if you do, I hope you do, check out the other artworks I've done for the As Seen On TV series. Um, but all of them are done on the day, um, in the spot. Once I finish the picture, I turn the system off. Like, that's it. I'm not going back to fix things up. It's, um, once it's off, it's off. Okay, dudes, ready for the grand reveal again. Um, I, not a whole lot has changed. I added a little bit of speckling, trying to give it just a little bit of like, oh, am, am I not gonna be happy with this one tonight? Um, 
and that's fine. Sometimes we aren't always super happy with the final product. I think it's hard to let this one go because I've really enjoyed working on it. I've really enjoyed how it's like turned out. Um, <clears throat> and the decision to like give it a little bit of story was a lot of fun as well. So I want to like do it justice now, um, which like I've always wanted to do these, these images justice, but like I was saying, every piece gets done, you know, at the time in the moment, I don't go back and work on these again. They take about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half each to do. And once they're done, they're done. I don't go back. I don't modify. I don't edit. Um, they really are, you know, done. I think it's called a la prima, which means all in the one go. Um, yes. So that's what we have here with Art Alive. Um, I am going to leave it there though. What's a good... So I always try and find like the right tool that I can hide the um, tool on the screen with. That way you've got like an uninterrupted view of the piece. So we have the Killer TV, his latest victim, a pile of bones, the bad juju coming off the back and that yellow triangle is supposed to represent like a doorway being opened and revealing this horrible, horrible scene. Like I said, you can catch a whole bunch of these pieces made ex only exclusively on a Sega Mega Drive over on the leftoverculture.com. There is a page there called As Seen on TV, which has high resolution versions of all these images. So over on the Leftover Culture Review website, you can download the PDF version of this art book. You can also grab these pictures for yourself as prints, t-shirts, puzzles, uh, you name it, it's probably available. I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to check out these corny little videos which take a really long time to actually make. I do really appreciate it. So, stay tuned for some more Leftover Culture Review and until next time, cheers guys.